Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here together in the house of the Lord. Uh, real quick, uh, if you turn to the activities page, you'll see uh, the activities coming up. Uh, do remember, we have been doing an online Sunday school, but we are looking, uh, planning to have on-site Sunday school starting September 6th. Uh, in in the Sunday school areas, and so I just want to make you aware of that. Also, uh, you can see our Wednesday activities on site here for you children and adults at 6:30 on Wednesday evenings, and then Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, the Fish Theater is showing a movie called Tulsa. I hadn't seen it. I watched the previews. It's a faith-based uh, faith-based movie. It is rated PG-13, just want to make you aware of that. It deals with substance abuse and some different things, issues like that. Uh, and so, uh, didn't want, just want to make you aware of that. Uh, but uh, that will be showing on Thursday and then Saturday and Sunday. Not on Friday night, but Thursday and Saturday and Sunday. You can see those times uh, listed there in the bulletin. Also, uh, on TBN this weekend, uh, the play from Sight and Sound Theater. Anyone been to Sight and Sound Theater in Branson? Or I think there's one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, but TBN is streaming free the play Jonah. And uh, we got to see that in Branson as family, and it's really good. And so you just sign in, you got to sign in and create an account, but it's free. You can watch it online. Uh, through through today. Today is the last day for that. So just want to make you aware of that if you have any interest in that. Also, you see uh, August 30th, next Sunday, wedding shower for Elise and Randy from 2 to 4 in the Family Life Center. West Carroll's uh, schools resume September 1st. Teachers go back this week. And so uh, ask for your continued prayers for our schools, uh, for our teachers and, and staff and support uh, personnel and our students as they will be going back and so keep them uh, in your prayers and then you can see the rest of the the announcements uh, listed there at this time brother josh is going to come for our call to worship if you would stand with us as we prepare to sing together O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. God, as we come into your presence here in this sanctuary or in the living rooms of our homes around this uh, community. God, we thank you for this day. God, we ask that the words of our songs be praiseworthy to your ear. God, we ask that as you speak your word through Brother Jonathan, that God, you would open our hearts, our ears, our minds to hear from you. God, we give you this service for your glory in your son Jesus' name. Praises to Jesus, to God's name, because He is to be praised.
God, we thank you for this one. God, as we give back to you what is yours, we ask that you would bless the gift and the giver. Multiply the gift for your work in this community and in this world. Bless the giver. God, we give this to you. In your son Jesus Remember uh, the Joyce Fox family, 
also the Richard Milligan family uh, of that service was uh, yesterday and uh, I know that they would appreciate your continued prayers on their behalf. We want to thank our benevolence team for uh, all that they do as they show up and provide a, a dinner for the family in, in their time of need, a chance where they can gather together uh, and, and visit as a family and we just uh, we just thank thankful to them for their for their faithfulness uh, as they minister in this way. It's an important thing, and so we're thankful for that. As we uh, <clears throat> prepare for our time of uh, worship together, our time of prayer, if you would stand as we sing together this morning. Our worship team introduced last week, and I think it's just such beautiful words because God is good, He is full of goodness and it's all for us.
come before you today and we are thankful for your goodness. That we can come together and raise our voices and raise our hearts to you and sing of your faithfulness, of your goodness, recognize your power and, and all that you give to us. We are so blessed, blessed beyond measure. And so Lord, this morning we come lifting up the name of our God. Lord, as we think about our prayer needs, uh, the list is long, the, the needs are many. Lord, I know uh, that you know each one better than we know it ourselves. And so, Lord, we lift each one. Those these who are sick, dealing with illness and, and in their bodies, Lord, we just ask that you would be with them, that you would touch and, and lift up and bring healing there, Lord. For those who are far from you. Lord, I know that uh, each one of us knows people and has friends and family members who are far from you, who need to, to have an encounter, a life-changing encounter with a Savior. And so, Lord, we lift them up. We ask that we would be faithful to intercede, to pray on their behalf, to be a people who share your truth and the hope that we have in you. Lord, we ask this morning that as we uh, begin this time of, of <clears throat> entering your word, we ask for your presence to be in this place, that you would speak to our hearts and prepare us for the message that you have for us. Lord, we offer it to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we finished up uh, our series on the Red Sea rules uh, last time, and I've been thinking, what am I gonna, what am I gonna share uh, today after after finishing up? And, and the and the thought that kept coming to my mind is I thought about what uh, we needed to talk about, or what the Lord would have me uh, talk about was discernment, the importance. Of discernment, I think we live in a time when discernment is it is as just about as important now as it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Have you have you ever uh, noticed that there's a lot of conflicting information out there in the world today? You look, look around and you don't know what to believe. Who? Everyone has a different idea. Everyone is trying to convince us of of one thing or something else, and it's it's not always easy to determine what we should believe. What is the truth? Who should we listen to? We need to be careful about what we believe. We need to be careful about what we share with others and what we put forward and proclaim as being true. And you know, as much as it's true in, in our world today, it's especially true in our life of faith. What do we believe about our faith? What do we believe about the gospel, about the one that we have uh, put our trust in? This need for discernment is not something that's new. It's existed for, for thousands of years. In fact, uh, in our scripture today, we're going to see uh, one of the apostles. We're going to see John uh, dealing with the, with the importance of of discernment. Yeah, this idea of what is it that we believe? Confronting lies and holding to that which is true. In 1 John, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 4. If you, you can turn there if you want. Uh, we'll get there in just a minute. But Jesus had, uh, John was proclaiming here that Jesus had come in the flesh. He lived as a man, died as a sacrifice for our sins. And he was raised <clears throat> from the dead on the third day and ascended to the Father. See, the truth of the gospel had been lived out in front of John. He had experienced it. He was an eyewitness. He saw these things with his own eyes. The message had gone out. Churches had been established. And there were people who had been saved, who had made the commitment to follow after Jesus, to put their trust in in him. But the, the rapid growth and the and the far spread of the gospel meant that the apostles couldn't be everywhere at the same time. 
There was churches that had been established and, and there were people who saw opportunity to take advantage of these new believers. To take advantage of the situation. And so these false teachers began to arise. And they began to intentionally substitute the truth of the gospel with a lie. And as a result, there were some who unknowingly believed that the, the lies that had been passed on to them, and they took them in and, and held to them as truth, not even realizing, not even knowing that what they had been taught was not true. And so the focus of John's letter was to call the people of God, the, His church, to discernment. Call them to examine that which they had been taught. Compare it to the, to the teaching of the apostles. The teaching of the scripture. He wanted them to be able to tell the difference between the truth and a lie. And so he encouraged them to be discerning. As they considered the message that they had received. This morning we're in 1 John chapter 4. We're going to be starting in verse 1. And as John begins here, he makes it clear that discernment is critical in our life of faith. It's a critical part. If we're going to live in this world, there are going to be false messages that come toward us. We're going to hear things that don't line up with the Scripture. There's going to be people that try to convince us to believe things that don't line up with the Scripture. And we need to be careful. We need to be sure to be a people of discernment. That we know the Scripture. In 1 John chapter, chapter 4, verse 1, John writes, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. As I was preparing this, I, I came across the... Uh, a guy who was writing about a sign that he saw on a church wall and it said this divine physician general's warning like the surgeon general's warning but the divine physician's general warning ingesting false teaching will complicate your life possibly eternally examine the scriptures to see if the things you hear are true Ingesting false teaching will complicate your life possibly eternally if you believe the wrong thing. So we are called to examine the Scriptures and see if those things which we have placed our trust in are true. If we don't practice discernment in our life, we're in constant danger of believing a lie. Don't believe everything you see. Don't believe everything you read. Take, take time before you just make it a part of your life. Try to find out if it's true or not. It's not always easy to find out. And if you can't make a determination, set it aside and don't make your don't base your life on that thing. We have an enemy who is good at making lies look appealing. That's how we convinced Adam and Eve. To sin in the garden. He, he made the lie look appealing. Mm -hmm. They didn't consider his words carefully. And compare them to the words that were spoken by God. We live in a day where false teaching is prevalent. There's teachers that have taken the word. <coughs> twisted it to fit their ideas. To fit their agenda. To make it a, more appealing to the masses. And as a result, it's complicated many lives, possibly eternal. People that have failed to put their trust in Jesus alone as the source of their salvation. Because they failed to examine the scriptures to determine that which is true. The sermon protects us, John says, from false spirits. He recognized that not everyone who, who claimed to have an encounter with the Spirit really did. Because there were many false spirits. Many uh, uh, spirits that, that taught and led in, the, in a direction that God does not teach or lead. Just because someone shares something that, that sounds spiritual 
that talks about spiritual things doesn't mean that it's from God. And so we must be careful that we know the Scripture, that we can hold to it, that it will keep us firm and grounded in that which is right and that which is true. John recognized that if we're not discerning as we consider these spirits, we may fall for the lie. And, and, and that considered, we may fall for the lie and consider it to be the truth. In 2 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul wrote that Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Looks good, right? It, 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 he looks appealing. It, it, it sounds good. But he takes the truth and he twists it just enough to get us to walk in the wrong direction, to walk away from that which God has taught, that which God has revealed. If he can get us to, to operate on, on our feelings. See, I think one of the greatest tools of, of the enemy in our life is, is our feelings. If he can get us to, to, to base our life on how we feel mm -hmm. instead of the basing our life on the truth of the gospel, the truth found in Scripture, mm -hmm. he can lead us wherever he wants us to go. See, there's many people today that feel that they're just fine. That they're just fine on their own. Me and God, I've, and I've heard it said, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, me and God, we have an understanding. Okay. I, I hope you do. I hope it's based on, on the Word and not on how you feel about it. I hope you don't you don't just you haven't just been convinced that that everything is okay because you feel okay. We need to be discerning in our understanding. Discerning in what we hold fast to. Our feelings aren't an accurate representation of our status in the sight of God. We hold to his truth and to his word, to his promises that were given to us. Discernment tests everything against the truth that's found in the Scriptures. John said, test the spirits to see whether they're from God. We can't test them against our feelings. We can't test them against what this world teaches and what it puts forward as that which is true. We must test them against the unchanging truth that's found in His Word. But as we seek to find that which is true, where do we start? It's a big book, right? There's a, there's a lot of things written in this book. There's some things that are pretty easy to understand. There's other things that, that take some study that, that aren't, aren't quite as easy to understand. So where should we start? Discernment for the Christian begins with the identity of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Who is Jesus? Who is this man that we have put our trust in? John wrote in verses 2 and 3, he said this, this is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. If a teacher or a preacher or a friend doesn't teach the name of Jesus, if they don't teach the same Jesus that's proclaimed in the Scripture, you need to run. <laughs> run in the other direction. Don't listen to what they have to say. Don't allow what, they, what they're trying to make you believe, don't allow it to take root in your heart and in your understanding and your belief. Turn off the TV. Close the book because the teaching that they're trying to get you to believe is false. A falsehood that will complicate your life, possibly eternally. When Satan confronted Adam and Eve, his first line of attack was to cause them to doubt the words of God. Did God really say? 
Did he really say that? Is that really what he said? And, and even if that's what he said, is that what he really meant? See, he, he, he was trying to instill a doubt in that in what they would trust. Doubt the nature of God. Trying to get them to doubt His authority. And here in 1 John, John is addressing the same kinds of falsehoods, but this time it was about Jesus. Teachers, leaders who would come in and begin to, to teach something different about who Jesus was. He wasn't really in the flesh. He didn't really come in the flesh. And, they, and that which was plain and simple and true and had been taught, they were trying to get them to believe something different about who Jesus is. And so John here addressed the, the specific heresy that was being taught, the specific thing that was the falsehood that was being taught by these false teachers, and he proclaimed that Jesus had come in the flesh. It was important that they, were, that they believed that He had come in the flesh. He confronted the lie with the truth about who Jesus was. Jesus was both God and man. In John's day, there were false teachers who had uh, left the church, but they were still attacking those who remained in the church. They'd kind of been driven out, but they were still uh, attacking from, from outside, trying to draw away those who would listen to their words and follow after them. They had taken the plain and true uh, message of the gospel and twisted it. They were specifically attacking the humanity of Christ. There was a heresy called docetism. And docetism comes from the Greek word that means to appear. And, and so basically they taught that Jesus didn't really have a physical body. He didn't really come as a man. He only appeared to be a man. He only appeared to live in this life as a human being. It was just an appearance. It wasn't, it wasn't the reality. And see, if they could get the people to, 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 to believe that, then they could, they could turn them even further away. If they, could, if they could get them to begin to change their understanding about who Jesus is, they could pull them away from, from the central tenet of the Gospel. The person of Jesus. <laughs> there was a, another uh, uh, heresy that, that was very common during these, these times. It's called Gnosticism. We've talked about that before. Uh, but the idea, one of the ideas of Gnosticism was that the, the belief that matter, the, you know, our bodies, everything that exhibits those things that we can touch and feel was evil. And there was this, there was this uh, uh, attempt to try to set themselves free from the from from matter. And if they could, if they could understand the truth fully enough, then they could be set free from the evil of this body. And so the idea that, that Jesus had come, that God had sent His Son to come and to live as a human being, was 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 not. Uh, was un unbelievable because God couldn't take on human flesh because that would mean that He was evil. And so they tried to, they were trying to get them to, to, to put away the idea that Jesus had come in the flesh. If He hadn't come in the flesh, then He didn't live as a man. If He didn't live as a man, He didn't live a perfect life as a man and His sacrifice meant nothing for us. And so John wrote to those who remained in the church that he wanted them to be able to recognize this lie for what it was. And he wanted them to practice discernment. And so he wrote that any spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ had come in the flesh was from God. If you, if you teach the right things, if you believe the truth that has been, that has been given to us, that has been passed down, then we can trust that, that that Spirit is from God.
but those that teach that which is false. Those who, who twist the person of Jesus, who don't believe in what the Scripture teaches about Him. They're coming with a spirit that is not from God. See, there was a dividing line in John's mind. And it was impossible for both of these ideas about Jesus to be true. They had to make a choice. What side will you believe? Who, what will you believe about Jesus? The center of our faith. Because truth begins with the right understanding of Jesus. Discernment not only recognizes the truth, but it also submits to it. It submits to it. We, we take the truth and we allow it to impact my life. My life is different because of that what I, that I believe in. We submit ourselves to His truth in our actions. The Scripture tells us that even the demons believe in Jesus and they shudder. They believe. They know who Jesus is. There's no, there's, they, they, they completely understand. Maybe better than, than a lot of people understand. They know exactly who Jesus is. And yet they do not submit themselves to Him. We need to understand who Jesus is. We need to hold to that. And we need to submit ourselves to that truth. Within Christianity, there may be some doctrines that we disagree about, and you go from church to church, and there's there's you know some some difference in, in teaching and understanding about about certain things. Some places where uh, there's uh, various interpretations of the scripture, things that aren't necessarily uh, real clear and can have some different ideas and understandings. But those aren't the things we're talking about. We're talking about the, the, the core. The, the truth of the Gospel. What the, what the Bible says about our Savior, about Jesus Christ. Things like God is the Creator. That Jesus was His only Son. The, the Son of the Father born physically into the world. That He lived as a man. Lived a sinless life. That He gave His life as a sacrifice. Offered it freely on behalf of His crucified on the cross. Taken down, placed in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day He rose again. And He ascended to the Father. And one day, He will return. And we look forward to that day when we will be welcomed into the presence of Almighty God. We believe that He offers forgiveness and new life to those who put their trust in Jesus who believe that His sacrifice was made on their behalf. See, these are not the only truths of the Scripture, but we need to, we need to hold to them with certainty. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. We need to acknowledge them. We need to say, yes, I believe these truths of the Gospel, but then we also need to submit to them as we live out our life of faith. Mm -hmm. As we make them a part of who we are. Finally this morning we see that discernment is a spiritual gift that is given by God Himself. In verses 4-6, through six, You dear children are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Do you want discernment in your life? You need to belong to the Lord. 
It's a gift that is given to the believer. Discernment overcomes the lies of the enemy. We have an enemy who's doing everything in his power to draw people away from the truth. He wants to destroy our witness. Destroy our lives. He wants us to think that, that everything's okay, that we don't, we don't need all these things, that we don't need each other, that we don't need the fellowship of the, of the body to encourage one another and lift one another up. And He's intent on bringing division and strife into the church. Division and strife into your relationships and into your life. But John reminds us who we are and whose we are. Who it is that we belong to. If we belong to Christ, we are from God and we are overcomers. Don't you want to be an overcomer? An overcomer in this life who can overcome the lies of the enemy. Who, don't, who doesn't have to be drawn away. But, but when you see a, a, a falsehood, you can recognize it immediately. As His Spirit brings discernment into your life. Those who practice discernment remain in the truth. And they recognize the lie for what it is is the truth of the Scriptures alive in your life? Has it, has it taken root in your spirit? Do you, do you find great hope and meaning in His Word? Is it, important, is it an important part of your life? If your Bible was taken away for the next month, would you miss it? Would you recognize that it was gone? See, we need, to, we need to hold to the truth of His Word. It needs to be an important part of our life and we need to stand on its Word as it gives us strength and the ability to, to live and stand firm in the storms and the difficulties and challenges of this life. As the enemy seeks to attack, as he seeks to, to, to put those false ideas, those false beliefs in front of us, he says, here, don't you want to believe this? It's easier. It'll be more, it's more popular. It's more, uh, it's more accepted. But if we're going to hold to the truth of the Scriptures, sometimes that means that we don't follow the crowd. We don't believe what everyone else believes. But instead, we hold to the foundation on which we are called to build our lives. We need to have that firm foundation that enables us to stand firm no matter what comes our way, that gives us the discernment we need to live with truth in this life. John here makes it clear that discernment recognizes the authority of the apostles to teach the truth. Those who had rose up were uh, sharing a lie and were teaching in direct opposition to the message that the apostles, those who had walked with Jesus, those who had, who had seen Him, who were eyewitnesses to, to His works and His words, those who had been uh, given authority to, to, to begin the church and teach that which was true. And so these false teachers were trying to undermine their credibility. But we can hold true to the, to the truth of the apostles. The truth that is taught in His Word. As we read the, the New Testament Scripture, we see the, the Word of the Apostles, the teaching that was carried out as they give their testimony, as they share His truth. And it wasn't just the early, truth, early church that needs to hold to the teaching of, of the Apostles. We also need to hold to the Apostles' teaching. The uh, uh, a truth that can be found and has been preserved in His Word. 
The apostles were given authority to teach the truth. No one else has that authority. No one in, in this life has the ability or the authority to alter that truth. There have been many who have come, come along and tried. They try to convince us that, that the, 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 this word has been corrupted. That, that it has been altered, that the church has fallen away, that, that we need to believe this instead of that. And, and they try all these things, but we can, we can know the truth if we hold to His Word. It will protect us from the lies of the enemy. And so we can have confidence in the message that the apostles proclaim. The message that has been preserved in His Word. I hope, that, I hope that His Word is an important part of your life. And if it's not, I, I challenge you. I challenge you to, to, to spend time in His Word. Allow it to, to speak into your heart. Look for His truth that is found in its pages. Allow His Spirit to lead and guide as you read and listen for His voice. We're called to practice discernment as we consider all the different messages that we receive. What have you believed? Is it the truth? The message that's been handed down to us by the apostles? doesn't matter who it is. If they teach a message that is not found in the Scripture, you don't need to believe it. Even if it's me. You need to hold to that which is true. Hold to the Word and make sure that, that you follow His truth. Those eyewitnesses who served, who served as, as His ambassadors in this world, who proclaim that truth, don't fall for a message that's been changed and twisted to fit our own understanding, our own way of thinking, twisted to fit the, the norms and, and understanding and beliefs of our society. God is calling us to cling to that which is true. Is the Word dwelling in you richly today? Can you point to the day when you repented of your sins, submitted your life to Jesus and received His forgiveness? That's the first step. First step. As we, as we uh, hold to the truth, the first step is belonging to the Lord so that we can receive the gift of His discernment, the gift of His Spirit at work within our lives. Mm -hmm. If you've never made that decision, today is the day. It's, your, it's an opportunity. It's your, it's your opportunity to, to make that decision as you put your trust in Jesus as your Savior. The one who wants to forgive. The one who can overcome your sin. Who can forgive your sins. And give new life. A life everlasting. Maybe this morning you have made that decision. But you kind of wandered off that, that path. You've allowed the, the, the things of this world. Or the teachings. Or or whatever it is to, to cloud your judgment and cause you to, to wander from his, from his truth that you haven't committed yourself in your, in your living in the way that you live your life to His truth that's found in Scripture. I encourage you to make that decision. To hold to that truth. To, to live Live it out in your life. Maybe, maybe this morning you haven't wandered, and you, but you just want more of Him. You just want to experience the Lord in, a, in an even greater way. You want His truth to, to, to expand, to be the foundation, the, the solid bedrock of your life. Whatever it is this morning, I encourage you to, to seek the Lord. Respond to His leading in your life. As He whispers, as He whispers, uh, <clears throat> come to Me. 
as He convicts, as He leads and guides, I encourage you to listen to His leading in your heart this morning. Not just, not just my word, not just what I have to say, but the leading of Almighty God in your life. If that's you this morning, you'd like to come, you're welcome to come to an altar and pray this morning. You can pray right where you are, but whatever it is, don't miss the opportunity to respond to the Spirit's leading in your life. That's right. He wants to speak to us. Mm -hmm. Where none of us have, a, have arrived. We've, we've, none of us have made it. We're, we're still on this journey of faith. And we still have, have an opportunity to walk more sincerely, to walk... Uh, in His presence more fully each and every day. Right. He's ready to meet with us. Are you ready to meet with Him? Mm -hmm. Or we come before You today. We lift up Your name. Lord, I'm so thankful for Your truth. Thankful that it's been preserved for us. That, that we have such easy and ready access to it, Lord. There's people all over this world who would give just about anything to, to get their hands on this book. To get their hands on Your Word where they could read it and they could, they could take it in and, and they, could, they could make it a part of their life. And yet so often I'm afraid we, we take it for granted thinking that we already know it or, or whatever it is, Lord, but there's still so much for us to gain, so much for us to grasp. Lord, I pray that You would give us a hunger and a love for Your Word. And as we take it in, that it would produce within us a discernment as we live in this life. As we live in this world that is trying to pull us in all kinds of different directions, trying to get us to commit to all kinds of different things, Lord, but that we would have a discernment that, that keeps us firmly rooted in You and in Your truth. Lord, You make us a people of discernment in this world. And as we share the truth that we have received, that we can share boldly with confidence, knowing that what we are sharing is Your truth. It's a message that can bring life and hope to the people around us. Lord, we offer ourselves to You this morning. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would stand as we sing together, you're welcome to come and pray. You pray right where you are. You can just lift up the name of the Lord together. But respond to His leading. A spirit's laying in your life today.
And um, when all of this began, you know, the big C word, <laughs> my heart was overwhelmed. And there are moments where it's still overwhelmed. But I went to what I know is true. God's word, prayer, advice of others, praising God in the storm. These are all things that Jonathan has talked to us about this summer. When this all began, I haven't shared this with very many people. When this all began, we had a little summer party with the Kellys. We thought this was only going to be like a two-week thing. And uh, the, the little Kelly kids and, and our kids were there at the house. And I said, you know what? We need to go pray for our parish. And I said, how about we go to all the points of our parish? It took two hours <laughs> to drive to Kilburn, to Goodwill, to Alps, and East Carroll. But we went to all four points. We actually got out of our vehicle. We stood on the ground on that border, you know, and we said a simple <coughs> prayer. God, be with our parish and be with this parish right here. And we prayed for all of our parishes. Now, um, I, I know we still got Corona, but that day, my faith was built. And in fact, we watched the kids and us would watch, and we were like, oh, we don't have anybody in our parish today. Our prayers worked. And for like a hundred days, maybe one hundred days, but it felt like it. But for many weeks, we did not see it. But what we saw was God. And even when the numbers grew, it didn't shatter our faith that God was still with us, that God was still protecting us, that God still had a plan. And I can't tell you how many times this summer that God has spoken to my heart. He hasn't given me a big revelation like on September 27th, it will all end. I wish you would talk to me like that. <laughs> but instead, He tells me things like, go by this person's house and pray for them. Call this person right now. Text this person. Go buy something for this person. You know, he's speaking to us all the time throughout the day. And it may not be big, huge, monumental revelations, but it is God's love being spoken into our heart. And how do we hear it? We hear it because we seek him first. As what Jonathan talked about today, we seek his wisdom, we seek his discernment, and we do that by continually to ask him to help us. And so I say this all as a testimony of what God is doing and will continue to do. And all we have to do is what Jonathan spoke to us about. Get into his word, spend time in prayer, and I want to add this. Share what God is doing in your life. Because that's how the gospel of Jesus gets around. Amen. He gets around through each and every one of us. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we are called to represent Him. So, anyway, there you go. To God be the glory. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it good that we can uh, be led by His Spirit in our life everywhere we go, everything we do, uh, that His Spirit can, can, can lead and guide as we base our life, our belief, our understanding on His Word. Go out this week and share the Gospel. Share the hope that you have in Jesus as you, as you live in this world. Look for ways that His Spirit will lead and guide your walk with you. As we close this morning, I just ask uh, Mr. Don if you would close us in a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the time that we've had together today and the freedom.